Hey guys, welcome back. Do you guys remember this project? This project it was to take a single input, like a 12 volt input, and give me four outputs, one of which is just 12 volts, but I wanted, um, I think it was uh, three, five, nine, and 12 volts. And um, I picked these little DC to DC buck converters and I guess some of you don't really know why I did that. Well, there is a cheaper way to do this, and that's with uh, these guys here. Um, actually, this is just the one IC really that we need, which is the uh, LM317. So with the LM317, you can take sort of almost any input voltage, I think up to like 60 volts, maybe. You have to check the data sheet on that one. And you can trim it down to anything that's um, less than the input voltage and it has to be less by I don't know a volt and a half or so. So these things are extremely cheap. I in fact have in my box of ICs I actually have quite a few of them uh, LM317s here and uh, I've been waiting to make a video on them. If you want a dedicated video to LM317s, um, you let me know in the comments below and we'll make it happen. But yeah, I did actually trial run some LM317s. I actually managed to kill one. And there's a reason for that. And I guess that reason is what this video is about. So I've got this module here, which is a DC-DC um, buck converter. This is a switching converter and this is an LM317 linear converter and I just want to show you why I use these guys instead of these guys. So the first thing I want to do is uh, these are both adjustable so I want to set the output to uh, 5 volts. So I have a 12 volt ish in. 12 volt ish is fine um, V in on this side, so in, yeah, V in this side, tighten that down, V in ground on this side, so now I'm going to have 12 volts coming from here, and I want it out and I don't really know what um, load to put it on. So here I have a 10K resistor that's uh, brown, black, black. That's 100. Zero, zero. And that is red. So this is another two zeros. So 100, zero, 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 10K, right? Yeah. Eh, well, yeah. It's kind of hard to do this uh, live, especially when you sh you're shit at math. Okay, let's do this. Whoops. So I just want a small current to flow. I just want enough uh, enough current to flow for me to set the voltage on this. I have no idea what it's already set as. I could have prepared this beforehand, but then uh, if it were to blow up then uh, that wouldn't be fun if you guys missed it. Really need a smaller screwdriver. There we go, smaller screwdriver. Yep, there we go. Okay, uh, and now we need to know the actual output voltage. So I have my multimeter here. You can pretty much see that, it's good. Um, doesn't really matter which way, but ground on this side. I'm afraid I didn't clamp this too well, so hopefully it goes well. Yeah, there we go. All right, and go. 10 volts. Ten point nine. No, nope, go the other way. start falling precipitously. This 
six. The other way. This is a 10 turn pot and it's uh, super sensitive. There we go. 5.1. Good enough. There's one done. The other one I suspect will be much more difficult. If these are plated through holes it won't be so bad. Gonna twist these like that. Oh, that's the inside. Whoopsies. Out. All right. Let's connect to these. Negative here. Hopefully that'll make enough contact. Positive here. Got some sticky tack, keep it down. There we go, okay. And now I have to replace these. With some alligator clips. Hopefully they work. Uh, okay, positive on this side, positive there, and negative on the other. go. Just going to double check that that's right. In, in, yeah, looks like, looks like it's right to me. All right, and I don't know what this is set to. And I'm getting, there we go. Give this a bit of a wiggle. 10 volts. And my screwdriver isn't big enough to make contact. Let's try the blade screwdriver. Now, try again with the pick quick. Come on, that's definitely spinning. Three, four, nah, 5.2, close enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna set up a little uh, experiment with these things, and I'll show you why I picked uh, this kind of switching, or a switching converter rather than a linear converter. So here I have both of my um, DC to DC converters, the linear and the switching, uh, connected this one a little bit more precariously than this one to the power supply at the same time. And now how am I going to show you the difference between these two? Well, all I have here is an LED with a resistor already on the leg. This is from my quick access box. Um, but I need to show you the difference, right? So what I'm gonna use are these guys. 
these guys are thermocouples. So they will tell us the temperature of the circuits that are bucking down the, um, the voltage. So I'm just going to put this uh, here, temp, like that. And then take this guy. And it will tell you this is not a fair fight because the LM317 actually has a heat sink on it. So, so you would think that it has an advantage. Well, it does, but uh, we'll see how that pans out for it. I'm just going to try to pop it right on the rear heat sink. Like that heatsink should be a good enough indication of how hot the um, chippy is getting. And if the heatsink gets hot, well, we'll know that this thing's generating a lot of heat. Alright, so there's the one. Might not be the best contact area there, but either way, we're going to get an idea. There's nothing scientific about this channel, just so you know. I kind of wing everything I do. All right, temperature, ground, like that. And then I want to grab some more of this tape. This is a uh, fake Kapton tape, by the way. It's not real stuff, but works pretty well. I checked it out when it came in in the mailbag a while ago. Yeah, we're going to try not to short anything out because uh, to get onto the IC here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a layer of tape. I know we won't get super accurate results, but even though I haven't done this before, I haven't done a trial run yet, uh, I think we should get relatively accurate results. We should be able to see a result. Uh, if we can't, then we can't. Not the end of the world. Uh, I definitely want to do a uh, LM317 video by itself, so if that's something you guys do want to see, let me know in the comments. If that is not something you want to see, if nobody comments that they want to see it, I'll just uh, I'll make it from my Patreons only. They get early access. But um, maybe in that case they'll get uh, only access. I don't know. We'll see. All right. This is the output wires there. There we go. Now we're going to turn these on. This is uh, that's Frankenstein, 75 degrees Frankenstein, 24 degrees Celsius, 24 degrees Celsius. So. At least the two thermal couples agree with each other. So let's turn this on and see what we get. I don't know about 18. Maybe I've lifted off a little bit. It is cold in the basement here, but not that cold. So so far so good. This uh, giant heat sink is dissipating a lot of heat. This guy here, I'm not too happy with. Yeah, so no trouble at this stage. So let's move up a little bit in the current ladder. And now I have two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. So 50 ohms load on each side plus the little LEDs. So again, let's power this up. This one's bouncing around a lot. It's because the probe is not really uh, super well affixed. It's also um, one spot in between, there's one layer in between the two. You can tell this one is starting now to climb a little bit. So is this one. 26. 27. This one's starting to climb. 28. See the current is way up there. 28. So we only have a 50 ohm load. That's not too much. 
30, already 30 degrees C. This one here, even if I press on it, I doubt I'll see much more difference. Even with the, the, the temperature of my finger, it's still like 18, 20. This one's up to 30 C. Let's see what happens if we add another 100 ohm resistor. I have not given this any chance to cool down. I think this has even gone up one degree because now the heat sink is starting to heat up with the uh, LM317. Press OK here. And away it should go. So again here, 1920, it's basically not increased. This guy will be climbing up. We have an effective resistance of about 33 ohms because three um, 300 ohm resistors in parallel. That's about 33 ohms. Look at that, it's climbing. 33 degrees C. Thirty-four. So, what I'm getting at here is that oh, we're actually we're hitting current limit. We can't have that. Nah. More current. There we go. Thirty-six. As you can see, the uh, switching power supply here hasn't really started breaking a sweat yet. They're both doing the same amount of work but the linear one is getting hot, 40 degrees C. This is a small load, tiny load. So if I wanted to power something on my bench, this would be insane. I wouldn't be able to, to drop a crazy amount of voltage like that or drop a crazy amount of uh, heat like that from a little tiny chip. So the reason it's happening like this is the switching power supply pulses uh, you know, this is going to be super simplified, mind you. It pulses the 12 volts, takes the 12 volts, it cuts it up into pulses, and and then those pulses are all jagged. It smooths it out with uh, some capacitors, so there's an output capacitor there. And it does this extremely quickly, so it creates a little bit of ripple, a little bit of, um, you know, like, like uh, some uh, AC uh, wave on top of the DC but it does it very efficiently. You're not really wasting too much um, power in the form of heat. What the linear regulator does though, is it actually burns off the difference between the input voltage and the output voltage in the form of heat. So basically, no matter how much current you're pulling from the output, it pulls that much from the input and burns the excess voltage away. That's why you need a heat sink on these. And in my testing, when I made up a little circuit on the breadboard, just pulling a couple hundred milliamps was getting it hot, like way too hot to touch. So that is why, even though this solution is cheaper than this solution, I chose to go with this solution for my everyday needs. As you can see, even if I press on this, See, we get like 19, 20 degrees. This thing is cool, calm, and collected while this thing is sending itself into outer space. So again, if you want to see videos on the LM317 or on linear regulators or on switching um, regulators, switching DC-DC converters, let me know in the comments below. It would be great to get some feedback of what you guys want to see on this channel. But as always, thanks for watching.